Uh, or I could use this guy. Yeah, that's Oops. also great. Can you put the? Don't you have like an XTR? Can you have a cube? Uh, uh, well, oh, HD I tap that. on that. I do have an HD tap. I could. I could really <laughs> talk about the most pretentious bullshit. Oh my god, dude! I'll go borrow Q's uh, XTR. We just record the video version on two XTRs. Yeah, hashtag uh, Kodak shoot film. Eleven minute episodes, one roll per episode. You gotta talk really quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Um, what are we doing today? Work-life uh, balance. Gonna, yeah, you're gonna ask me questions, I guess. Work-life balance. So, question. Yep. You have an amazing trip planned. I do. With your wife. I you're do. going to. This is all hypothetical. Gotcha. But, okay. But I Mandy, have an if you're planned. if you're listening, I tried. I tried. Sorry. Um, okay. Got it all planned. You have a maiden trip with Mandy. Uh, yeah. Let's say Iceland. Mandy, my wife, for anyone's wondering. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, probably three weeks before, you can email. And there's this awesome opportunity that, three of weeks course, before. before your trip to Iceland. Sorry. No, um, I, I got what you're saying. I just, I, it's always like two days before for me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, two days. And well, we'll say three weeks. So, and this awesome opportunity lands over the same dates as your trip to Iceland. Yep. What do you do? What do you do? Man, what do I do now or what do I, what did I used to do? Um, do you want to do the, what you, well, you would have taken it. Let's just break the ice on that one. I probably, in the past. I probably would have been heavily tempted to take it. I probably would have gone to Mandy and been like, hey, I got a thing. Can we move our trip? Like, it's money. It's more money than we're spending on the trip. So it basically makes up for the trip when we take the trip later. Like, it's an opportunity. This I had this scenario happen uh like a week before our wedding i had we had like our well let's pause on that before you get to that yeah before you get to that so that's how you would do it yeah um how would you do it now i would just say no i have plans not available so does it matter what the opportunity is doesn't matter if there's maybe an i guess an opening for a conversation with mandy it doesn't matter at all it's just a straight no Hey, kids dying over there? <laughs> uh, just trust me. She's playing with a friend. <laughs> She's fine. She's I, fine. Uh, I mean, I guess there are scenarios where it comes up. I got called a year or two ago about doing a big music thing that was the same week as a vacation we had planned, and we talked about it, um, about me like going for a few days and then meeting up with her and just sort of decided not to. I mean... There's some scenario where it would be a conversation, but as a general rule at this point, like if I block off time for something personal, it's blocked off and it's relatively non-negotiable. You know, if I got yeah. called by like George Lucas, you know, maybe there's a conversation, but 99% of the phone calls that I'm going to get, I'm going to say no to. Although uh, there is also a inverse relationship with um, the more blocked off your time is the more likely you are to get a once in a lifetime opportunity <laughs> yeah. it's never but, like the which, producer you always work with it's like some director you never worked with who has right. this crazy thing yeah would you say though that a lot of times what we might in the moment consider like an awesome opportunity or once in a lifetime is not really that if we look long and hard at it i think um i think there are i think big we convince ourselves a lot of times we're yeah, like, in the in the moment you're definitely biased to like this is this is the opportunity, this is the moment, this is my defining, you know, career break, this is whatever it's going to be. Um and often it isn't. Um and often I think too it's like not only is it not your big break, it's usually not even what you think it is and half like I don't know, I don't know. I think a lot of those things in my experience even like evaporate on you too like it there's nothing worse than like canceling some sort of like prior commitment for some big opportunity and then like the job dissolves you know right. and it's like they're not they're not hung up on 
you getting the thing. And so for you to like rearrange your whole life around it, I think is, is dangerous. So do you take the, I, I kind of do the same thing with like, w- I do it with personal projects too, but like I book them in quotes. Yeah. Like I book, uh, any trips I have with the family, any family events on the calendar, book my r- actual paying jobs on the calendar, as well as I try to book any personal projects that I like really believe in, um, and decide to do, um, on the calendar as well. Is that kind of what you do once they're on the calendar? Like, how are you approaching like those different facets in your life? Um, from a, like, I guess, scheduling perspective. Yeah, so I have a Google Calendar and I try to color code everything in there. So like work is red, uh, phone calls and Zoom meetings, like things where I have to talk to people but don't have to be anywhere specific are yellow, meetings that are in person are orange. Um, And there's like a few other codes, but generally like once something goes on there, it's pretty firm. Like if I got a call today that was like, hey, can you shoot Thursday afternoon? I would be like, no, sorry, I'm busy. Um, And, you know, I think part of that is the, like, confidence and opportunity and whatever else thing to be like, I could do these other days, I could do whatever. But, like, you know, if people are like, hey, could you do Wednesday or Friday? And you go, no, I'm not available, but I could do the following Monday or whatever. Like, I think that there's a part of me that always felt like I had to be available to whatever the first thing someone asked for was. But at this point, it's like, if it's... If it's a date night, if it's, you know, lunch plans with friends, like if it's not like, oh, I want to go to the gym that day. Like if I have actual plans that involve another person, they tend to be pretty locked. Yeah. I mean, I can attest to that. I think you, I texted you one day and you decided to have your phone off and spend it with Mandy and I didn't hear from you till the next day. I think it's something you're pretty good at promise the I kids try. They're, they're having fun the kids are having i fun. used to be horrible at it i used to be like uh, you know that so was, was that, that something that you were like i need better work-life balance because i know that's like this holy grail topic that or not holy grail topic but something that everyone's trying to accomplish is to have work-life balance like when did you start becoming a stickler about it and why i think um i think for me it was like something I would associate it more with like therapy than anything else and more with learning about healthy boundaries than anything else. Um, And for me, like that started with applying boundaries towards like family relationships and stuff, whether that's like my parents and siblings or whatever else. But, um, you know, I think I sort of grew up with a lack of boundaries that followed me into work that was like, if someone asks for something, you say yes, you know, what all these, these little things that carry along with you and learning that like, it's okay to say no, it's okay to be direct, it's okay to have preferences, it's okay to have feelings, um, that as I started doing that work and then came back to the work conversations, it was like, oh, I don't have to say yes that like I don't have to I don't have to say oh I'm busy but it's like dinner with my wife so I'm ob-. like I just have to say I'm busy I don't have to qualify it right. at all you so know and you, I think I always felt the need to justify it before do you look at your like is there a certain amount of days you try to target to work I guess like how do you I don't really like the, even the question I'm asking <laughs> you I just thought yeah. it would be an interesting topic and know your opinion I don't like the idea that we have to strive for balance um, work-life balance specifically I think you should go whatever you're doing in front of you do it 100% so if that's with family 100% if that's a work 100% and then the balance is instead of in month by month or week by week will happen naturally over years but yeah uh, how do you I don't know. How do you try to manage your time, I guess, from a work family? Like, even it goes into a relationship, I guess that's case by case with like knowing how, what Mandy likes, the amount of time she wants to spend with you. Like, does she like date nights month a month? Is she regimented? Like, all those things. Like, yeah. It's very, I guess it changes depending on who we're asking, but I would love to know. Yeah. I mean, I can only speak for me. Uh, you know, I think there's a few things there one is like i used to always just sort of be like um a squirrel frantically stuffing nuts in a tree um and so it's like anything that came along take it and just like put it in the bank you know um and especially 
come like November to December, I would really go into that mode because it was like, I'm going to owe a bunch of money for taxes in April. And so you just start like spending as little money as possible and saving as much money as possible. Right. Um, and I never knew where I was, never knew what I owed. I think one of the big changes there, um, was like getting an accountant and a bookkeeper and auditing all my expenses and making an actual budget for myself. Cause I was always in this position that's like, I know that I make enough money to pay all my bills, but I don't actually know how much money I make. I don't know how much money I need to make. I don't know how much money I spend on anything. I just know that it all works out. (laughs) And so there's sort of this sense that's like, I just have to keep this hamster wheel spinning. Um, And so like actually like this year back in January, we were on vacation and we sort of like audited our, our budget and added up all our expenses and figured out like, this is what we need some to vacation, cover all man. our bills for a year. Yeah. This is what I do on vacation. Um, but, uh, it, it was really helpful to have a number that's like, okay, if I make this much money this year, everything that has to get paid, will get paid. Everything's going to be okay. Right. Um, and so took that number divided it by 12 and said, here's my target monthly salary, uh, put it in a spreadsheet. And my goal is really to like hit that number every month and optimally, you know, to go over, but I definitely start getting a lot more, uh, willing to say no once that number is covered for a given month. Um, but I mean, honestly, the other thing that's crazy, I was panicking. I was going through full existential crisis mode in January because I was looking at that number and I was like, how am I going to do that? What are we going to do? Like, when's work going to come back? It's been slow in January. Uh, you know, whatever else, how, I don't know if that's going to happen. You start being like, can I cancel my Spotify? How can I save money? (laughs) Uh, and I think that was like for me earlier on in my career, I never wanted to know the numbers because it would like freak me out. But once I wrote the numbers down and was like, okay, I'm going to put my head down and target this. I hit my 2021 goal by the end of April. So I technically could sleep the rest of the year if I really wanted to, and my bills would all get paid. Um, and I don't say that to brag. I just say that to be like, it, it now gives me so much leverage to say no to things. Um, cause I'm not paranoid. Like what if I can't pay my rent next month? What if I can't right. whatever? Uh, I know exactly where I'm at and I know I'd love to, you know, be better than that. Cause that budget doesn't account for investments or, you know, anything else. It's just sort of like pay the bills. But, um, I don't, I don't know that I remember what the question is now. <laughs> Those are all good things. No, I, I was more of like, what are some of the step-by-step things, or I guess steps, what are some of the step-by-step um, things that you do to quote unquote balance out like the personal oh, yeah, the work yeah, yeah. stuff on yeah, a month-by-month yeah, yeah. month basis? Um, but I don't think it really matters the question, honestly. I think what you touched on was awesome because if taking some like mm. st- applicable things away from this, like I think having an accountant, geez Louise, Please just have accountant. I'm going to give a big plug right now. I'm not a sponsor, but I because hired Core Group and they have changed my life. Sorry, I think I talked to everybody. You say that again. Uh, do it again. Oh, that's okay. I, uh, right. I just, I'm just, just going to cut you out of that. Exactly. Part. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but uh, like, they're I, fantastic. Was, core Group is what he just plugged. Um, yeah. I think it was funny during the pandemic and when PPP loans and all those stuff started hitting, the amount of like accounting questions that I saw on like cinematography and production Facebook groups was like yeah. insane. We all what, suck at business. Can't do yeah, basic numbers. <laughs> exactly. So like just get an accountant for crying out loud. Like just get yep. an accountant if you're listening to this. That's a great step. And then, I mean, what you did was probably super easy from a perspective of knowing your expenses. Like you could download yeah, your- can do that. Yeah, you could download all your expenses from either your credit card or your bank statement and do month by month. And by looking at yeah. previous years, um, but I think the biggest thing, which I think should encourage people, is the fact that you said that you just did that in the year 2021, which means right. that you're still learning. It's still something that, like, up until recently, you probably struggled and had anxiety. So, like, just because you haven't done it, it's not too late. Like, it will really help. A hundred percent. And it's something that my whole career, you know, even let's talk about the tax thing for a second, because I do think that's a piece of it, is there when you're in the cycle of 
you're spinning the hamster wheel, you know everything's working out, but you don't really know how. You don't know what you owe for taxes, you don't know what you made. We justify spending money on gear and stuff because it's a write-off, and then you hit that like November, December where you go, I don't know what I owe, I know what I have in the bank, I am in like in this weird mode of trying to save but also trying to get write-offs that now you start saying yes to everything out of panic again because like I mean I don't know about everyone listening to this but like I've had tax bills that range from a couple hundred bucks earlier on in my career to you start getting into the twenty thirty thousand dollars in one fell swoop if you haven't paid quarterlies and it's like that's a whole thing um, and I've seen that cycle tear people apart where like they're just so desperate to try and keep up with taxes and that's another small thing that's like just knowing that number and knowing where you are is so helpful because maybe maybe if you just didn't buy some you know crazy piece of gear you bought and just put that money straight into your taxes instead you would have had a way less stressful year like there's a bunch of little examples like that um but you know i think if you're if you're just starting out and you don't have like any resources get like quickbooks and hook it up to a business checking account or whatever and then have a cpa file your taxes but at least try to track all your expenses the, and whatnot one thing I, I like to do is make get like two cards and be really diligent about using one credit cards that is about using one just for work expenses and tying it to the quickbooks account along with yeah. your quickbooks checking and that just makes things very simplified um just a quick tip if you haven't done that yeah no totally and that's where like a hundred percent like separating your business. Uh, all my income comes into one business checking account. All my expenses go out of that account. My credit cards get paid out of that account. Um, and even having, excuse me, bookkeepers and accountants now, like it makes it easier for them to keep track of everything too still. Um, and it makes it easy for me mentally. Cause like the way that I do it now is I basically, I'm still a sole proprietor, but I basically salary myself. So on the first of every month, I move this fixed amount of money from that business account to my personal account. That covers all our personal stuff. And then, you know, out of that business account, I'm setting aside money for taxes. I'm setting aside money for gear, whatever else. But it used to all be very sort of muddy and just one big pool and you're like pushing numbers around. And so this was a work-life balance right so this is this is where i was going back (laughs) no it's good to know that i think part of be having a good work quote-unquote balance in work life is to um organize your life and ask questions of people that are smarter than you who run maybe production companies even if you're a sole prop so like that's part of being in a good mental state to then be able to gauge whether a work should be taken or not taken versus going on a trip that you've planned with people that you do life with. And right. So yeah, get your shit in yeah, order. Totally. And that's where like knowing your numbers, knowing all that stuff makes such a big difference. Um, and you know, uh, full disclosure, it's like if you want the full bookkeeping accounting thing, it's like a couple thousand bucks a year, which at the end of the day, like for where I'm at a hundred percent worth it, just even if it wasn't for the stress of bookkeeping just for the not having the stress of that tax bill that's a mystery come april it's worth it for me um but there are definitely earlier parts of my year where i couldn't budget that version that gives you an updated estimate estimate on quarterly like an ongoing yeah i had quickbooks online my problem was i never went in and labeled things Ah, like I would do it for like a month and then I would get busy and just forget. And then I would be like, well, I'll just catch up on it later. And then it was like April, I would go back through the year of transactions and try and start classifying things. (laughs) Yeah. But so if you're, if you're good at that and like can make a monthly habit of, you know, whatever, first of every month I go through last month's transactions and make sure that's up to date. That's great. I was never good at it. And that's part of why I end up paying someone to do it now. But like it needs to get done. If you're not doing that and someone else isn't doing that, you're going to be in chaos constantly. Yeah. And I think chaos is how, when we introduce chaos and we aren't clear in our (laughs) decision making. And that yeah. goes into the whole, like, you're saying yes to everything because you're doing it out of fear. And then you have all of this personal life that is just getting destroyed behind you and right. no way to offset that at all because you're just, right. you're in chaos. Um, yeah. So I think that's something that's like knowing where you are gives you a whole lot more leverage to be like, it's okay. I can afford to say no to this. We're good. Uh, you know, I have other other stuff going on. 
Um, I think another big thing for me on the like work life balance side was realizing, you know, it sort of comes back to that confidence thing, but like you're, you're the only one who can put your life in order. And like, I always sort of, you know, had this thing that's like, oh, my, my schedule is so inconsistent and crazy. And so like, I don't have time to like go to the gym or have a routine or whatever else. And it's like, that's a horrible excuse. Like if there's anyone that has the ability to make sure that happens, it's usually us, but we're the ones who are like, Oh, I, I sleep in until nine and then I have a five o'clock call time. Then I do whatever. And it's like, at this point I've had to enact daily routines. That's like, I wake up at six 30 every morning right now, like weekends, weekdays, it's just a routine thing for me. I get up, I journal, I meditate. Um, I go to the gym. I, you know, have been running and like those things to me help balance so that like when I, you know, come to my email at, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock even, that's fine. Like I don't have to be up at 2 a.m. replying to every email right away. I don't have to be answering the phone on the weekend. Um, And, you know, I think that ties back into this thing of just like confidence and setting boundaries, but that like when you start putting it in its place and saying, hey, sorry, I'll get back to you on Monday. Hey, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just doing stuff right now. Like I have plans, like your life isn't going to collapse. And I feel like for me before it it was always like, yeah, everything's going to be fine. And shockingly, everything will get better actually, because instead of having like marital or relational stress, because you're always ditching on things like, cause even little things, you know, I, and there's personal lines here, but like for me, I used to always be like, oh, I know I, you know, said I was going to be at your nephew's birthday, but I had this thing come up, whether it's a call or whatever else. And it's like, yeah. it's not always a big trip to Iceland, but it's like, you can say no, you're not obligated to move, put your whole life on hold at the drop of a hat because you agreed to a one day shoot in a month like if you're busy you're busy tell someone you're busy and they'll yeah. deal i also think too that like we, we we put too much pressure or like not pressure we put too much importance on because like my answer to if i ask myself the question i asked you is like i believe that those big opportunities are really not as big as you think they are right. um and they're just going to be normal opportunities and like you stated like a letdown too um and I think we put too much pressure or importance, like I said, on on opportunities in quotes, and they're mm-hmm. not really as big as you think they are. I think success is the culmination of uh, hard work over a long period of time. And right. like, I think we should just take a step back, take a breath and like, no, your bank commercial is not going to get you the Nike spot. And honestly, your Nike spot maybe isn't really that important in the grand scheme of things. And it's not going to be your big break. Like, I don't know. I hear a lot of people like, oh, this is going to be my big break. This is going to be my big right. break. And I find big, big breaks aren't obvious. They're like, they come out of nowhere. I will, and maybe, you know, someone can tell me in the comments if I'm missing something about my life that they can tell me, but I don't think I've ever had a big break. I think I've had outlier projects. And that's where like your career progresses slowly and steadily in the direction that you are intentionally pushing it. But like, I've gotten calls that were like, I did this like quarter of a million dollar commercial campaign and I was like, this is my big break. Like I'm going to do this stuff now. Haven't gotten called for it again. It was an outlier. It wasn't a big break. It was like the weird opportunity that popped up. Um, And I think that's the thing is like those big opportunities are not a big break to a new and brighter future. They're outliers as a general rule would be my experience. Like I've gotten calls from big brands and production companies and agencies and people who said, hey, we want to put you on our roster. And every time I go, it's my big break it turns out to just be an outlier and the things that are consistent big progress are happening slowly over time and you're building and you're building and you're building but if you have some like big spike everyone wants to think that that project is going to be like Elliot Roush's last minute with Odin and next thing you know you're on your career of like million dollar commercial spots right. but that happens to like four people and the rest of us it's just like you're your child's birthday party is a much more important part of your life than that like one bigger budget job than usual or the thing you got to do that had a steady cam yep. so you had to blow off the rest of your life yeah the end yeah i think I the mean, one other thing a, i would say yeah that's just I mean, on that the work life balance thing is uh because I, I agree with you that's like be 100 percent in whatever you're doing right now and i think that's something that i've been trying to be better about 
with what I say yes to is if I feel like I'm right. not going to want to be a hundred percent into it, I yep. just try to say no to it because like mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than being on a job and just like phoning it in. Yep. Um, and so even like I did this thing this morning that was smaller than usual, whatever, but like we had a ton of fun with it and we all just put ourselves into it and put a hundred percent, hundred percent of ourselves into it. And I think that that's a good way to go about it. Um, I think it's dangerous when your identity gets sucked up in that. And that's a whole nother topic. (laughs) Right. But it, but it feeds the work life balance thing, right? Is when your identity is tied up in it, then it over, it starts overriding everything else. It fogs your, your decision-making abilities. Right. A hundred percent. And so that's where like one of my, one of my frameworks that I've heard about that's helpful for me is this idea that's like life is not a game. It's a whole lot of games. And that the way you win the game is by playing in such a way that you can play as many games for as long as possible. Um, and so like for me, when I look at that, or like there's another similar thing that uh, Simon Sinek talks about with the infinite game, that's like there's finite games and infinite games and finite games are things like baseball and football that have like teams and winners and losers and beginnings, middles and ends. And infinite games are things like Legos uh, or, you know, whatever, Lincoln Logs or marriage or business like you don't win you just keep playing and infinite games the goal is to play for as long as possible um, and you get to make up the rules and I think for me when I realized that like work and this career is not a winnable game it's not a beginning middle and an end it's just a thing that I'm going to keep doing that that helps me balance it a lot better Um, and when it's a game that I want to play and I want to play well, but it can't be at the expense of every other game. Like if I'm, if I'm losing the health game because I'm really over investing in the work game or I'm losing the relationship game because I'm investing in the like Instagram game, there's a problem. And so I agree with you that like, if I'm at the gym, I'm a hundred percent there as much as I can be. If I'm on set, I'm a hundred percent there. But if as a pattern, one of those things starts significantly sacrificing the other things for me, that's where I have to reassess um, and there's some people who do that. No, like if you want to go to the Olympics, then maybe you do have to make sacrifices. Maybe no, you're no, not. Yeah. If, and, and that's like a question for you in your life. But for me, it's like if any of those things is significantly impacting the other stuff in a way that's devolving, that's where I have to reassess. Yeah. So how many quote unquote games are you playing? Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> that's a great question. Hang on, hang on, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, I wanted to answer it while you fix that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I uh, I don't know. I think it's hard to it's hard to break it all down. I mean, there's like finance is a game, right? Like personal finance, business finance. I think creative, like visual creativity, uh, is a game. I think fitness is a game. I think uh, being a husband is a game. I think being a podcast host yeah but there are definitely like more important games than others you know like yeah. to me it's like i think when people think of it work life uh balance or whatever it's really personal i right. guess like relations with relationships excuse me with your wife your significant other your kids your home life and mm-hmm. then the work life so like that's kind of the two games that i think people immediately go to <laughs> yeah well, and I think that's where it's like the the pillars are like physical health, mental, emotional, and spiritual health, relationships, and then, you know, I think I would almost separate creativity and financial success as like two sub parts of things that, cause if you just call it work and personal life, I think that's where it gets messy. Cause like you could go be doing all personal projects or just podcasting all the time. And you could say, this isn't work, but it's, you know, or you could just be working all the time. And it's not creative. And so I feel like I have to balance, you know, the creative outlet game, if we're going to use that framework and like the make money game and figure out how to put all those pieces together. So I don't really look at it as just like work and then personal life. It's more like the pieces of personal life, the pieces of work. And there's That's like fair. six pillars building everything up. Yeah. But I think the discussion is like what makes like anybody who's an artist a little difficult is because of the overlap and like you were saying with the personal and or what do we call about it an episode we called it an episode two like commercial no 
art and commerce yeah so you have the art and the commerce side of that pillar and then yes i think there's like even there's like your family as a whole then if you have a significant other that's another pillar um i think it was just a good thing for people to i love what you said about if something what did you say if something is drastically like you, if, what did you if you're like overweighting something yeah. and it's harming or coming at the cost of something else exactly that's when you need to like sit down and like really analyze like what you're actually doing right and if you because i think change. we like myself i'll just speak for myself i think historically i've had a bad habit of thinking that i had the correct weight of everything and so you go hey, I'm taking this week-long job and, you know, your significant other or someone goes like, but we have plans. And you're like, yeah, but... And you go like, but the money, Classic. but the opportunity, but the whatever, but, you know, you don't get it. And I think that's where, like, if if anyone in your life is raising that flag, freaking take it seriously. Like, take a real hard, honest look at it and preferably bring it to someone else who's not you or that person, like have another inner circle person and be like, should I take this? Should I not take that? You know, whatever it may be. But cause I think we're all, we're all really good at justifying things. But if someone's saying like, Hey, you're, you're mentally a little touchy lately, or like you haven't really been present or, you know, you're missing family stuff. Like they have a better sense of it than you do. And you're going to get defensive about it, but you need to take a really hard look. Cause next thing you know, you'll be uh, me and that's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god i'm buying a camera this week the end <laughs>